Abd El Nasser uh, Al Salmi, Chief Operating Officer of Gulf Air. First thing I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Udo in, uh, in Bahrain. We have uh, 28 aircraft, which is uh, six aircraft are wide body 330s and 22 aircraft are narrow body 320 and 321s long range ones. In the uh, Gulf Air headquarters we have a small museum which talks about Gulf Air history starting from uh, 1950 as Gulf Air was uh, established at that time. And in 1970s Gulf Air moved forward getting a, a proper jet aircraft, uh, TriStar which was our main, our wide bodies, 737s. Gulf Air has been uh, the pioneer in the region and will still continue to be the pioneer and one of the best airline in the region. The last thing which I want to say is welcome to Bahrain and welcome to Fly Gulf Air. Thank you. Maybe I was talking too fast and I, maybe I missed anything. So now I'm going to ask our friend Captain Mohammed if you have anything to add. Captain Mohammed is the commander of the flight at the moment. He was listening to me very quietly and smiling at me. I don't know what he's going to say to us. I will leave the last thing to you to talk about if you want to talk. You've covered everything on this aircraft. The glass cockpit. Maybe you forgot the analog panels down yeah, here. Yeah, I okay. didn't. Okay, maybe you could look yes, at that. It, so if we do lose all our panels and uh, not much electrics around, we can fly on these analog panels. We have the old uh, horizon indicators, DMEs, altitude, altimeter, and our speed indicator. And this is uh, a very interesting uh, subject for people to know that the pilot really goes and there are very intensive training and qualification to get the license. And once he gets the license, it's not only that, he will have to get also a certification of first, first class medical. And not only that, every six months, the pilot then will be examined again on all the knowledge of all the system that I described. He should know it inside out. He should be able to know inside out how to handle the emergency. He will be given emergency, but not on the aircraft, on that flight simulator, which will look exactly like the cockpit, but it is on the ground. It's about four hour session. And hopefully one day with my friend here is going to come and take photos and videos of what Gulf Air does on their flight simulator training. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank my friend for flying with us on GF-154 flying to Bahrain. We're just going to practice now. We're going to do a practice autoland. So we'll assume that the visibility in Bahrain is fog, and we are unable to see the runway by pure visual, and we cannot do a landing by visual references. So we'll let the airplane to do the landing. Confirm that the airport country is in the LVP. It's a practice. Verify crew qualification. We're both qualified. Crew, uh, sorry, check aircraft system status and capability. Status is normal, so we can do any, no restrictions. Below 5,000 feet, that's when the airplane starts getting the signal from the ground station and the radio altimeter. And that's when the category of the airplane actually is going to change from Cat 1 to a Cat 2 or a Cat 3. 1,000. So if you see the airplane is actually navigating it perfectly by the ILS, the Glyso and the localizer. And if we look outside, it's exactly the two wise to raise the visual aids that we have. Stabilize. Continue. Now that glide slope and lock this approach, land. Land. <coughs> That's indicating now the airplane has gone into the land mode, indicating on the PFD. And as we see, it's maintaining the center line of a runway and the vertical profile. It was very nice, I enjoyed it. I wish we can do this every day, huh? <laughs> <laughs>